Shamai, my name is Mr. Grimson, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to the Year 11 Learning to Learn program. This presentation is to go alongside the Learning to Learn booklets, as well as the hard work students are doing in form times. It should give a bit of support, some hints and tips, and some feedback from parents who have gone through this process before. How we as a school and at home can work together to make sure your child ends a crucial year successful and pleased with their results, but most importantly, happy and with the tools for positive well-being and resilience ahead of their future lives. So I thought we'd kick off the presentation by having a bit of a think about the types of students we have in Year 11. Maybe your child's feeling like Sam Warburton, happy, successful, powerful, well-driven, knows that they've done really well for their numeracy exams, looking forward to being successful in their mock exams at Christmas and having excellent results in the summer season. Wouldn't we all like children like Sam Warburton? Or maybe this is more of a familiar scene in your household. Feet up, putting everything off. Oh, it doesn't matter about the mock exams. I'll revise for the real things. Oh, I'll start revising at Easter. Oh, no, I'll start revising maybe a couple of weeks before the exams. That's when it really matters. Or maybe this is your child. So many worries, so many things to do. And their way of dealing with it is just to bury their head in the sand, maybe stick their legs up in the air at the back and hope all of these things go away. Or it could be that your child is working so unbelievably hard at the moment, but also feeling so overwhelmed by they're pushing that boulder of work up the hill. And they might just need an arm around them, someone to get in there and help them push up and make it more manageable. And that's why we created Learning to Learn. A toolkit to support our Year 11 students no matter which picture they fall under. To help them become independent and resilient learners and to understand how they best revise. Skills that they're going to need for the rest of their lives. To have lots of hints and tips to take away and try at home. And to reinforce the hard work and the revision skills they're already doing within their classroom lessons. To help them get into healthy work routines and have a good work-life balance which is going to be crucial for their rest of their lives and to help manage anxiety and to look after their mental health within what can be a very tough and crucial year. Students have already been receiving the Learning to Learn session since September, delivered by their form tutors in Thursday form times. The accompanying booklet for parents, which was released last week in the Head Teachers blog, highlights all of the sessions so far, as well as including subject-specific support, links and books that would be really useful to get. So, where do we start? This is often the hardest bit, the blank page moment, and once we get over this, things become easier, things become more manageable, and we become better learners. Some of my top tips are up on the screen at the moment, but I just wanted to highlight a few for you. Creating a quiet, a tidy, and organized work area is a really good way of starting and feeling on top of things and to start to build up that momentum. Establishing really, really good work routines is crucial and the idea of revising little and often is really important. In the booklet, it goes into a little bit of detail about the theory of why that's effective and how best to stretch your revision time. As someone who loves their music and their sports, I'm a huge advocate for extracurricular activities. So maintaining your hobbies, keeping fit, going outside, getting some fresh air, having those rewards and those things that you enjoy doing is really, really important. So striking that good balance between revision time and looking after yourself is really important. And lots of those ways to start include us as our support as a parent. Now, this leads us nicely on to some of the roles in which we take on during this year. It could be the supporter, the champion, for our child. I know as a parent of a young child how much joy I take in supporting and cheering on my child. It could be being the motivator, getting them up in the morning, getting them going, getting them infused about what they're doing and their revision. I've got a nice little 90s Mr Motivator reference for those people who remember him. It could be to be a timekeeper, the counsellor, the listener, the proofreader, the sounding board, the advisor, the planner, the preparation manager, all of those different things, all of those different juggling acts that we need to do as a parent to help support our child. Often it might be feeling a bit like this. 
a thankless job. So many things to think about. Or maybe even this. And as a parent of a small child, I also know this feeling very well too. No matter how we're feeling or the different roles we're having to play this year, one of the most crucial things we can do for our young people is to listen, is to be there, to be that supportive encourager to help guide them through. And actually, I know how encouraging it is when I'm finding things hard as a parent to hear from other people as to how they've done it, how they've experienced, how they've got through some of those tough times. Which is why I've asked some parents of ex Year 11 students about their experiences and any words of wisdom that they could pass on to us. And over the next couple of slides, I have some key quotes for you. Some of my best ones include managing expectations being really useful. So when you're having those opening discussions with your student, talking about what their target grades are, what's really good for them, what are they going to be happy about in the summer, what do they need to do to make sure that they're going to be happy with those grades. Having that mantra that hard work does equate to results, you put in what you get out, and the subjects you work hardest in are the ones you generally do best in. So therefore, the ones you are struggling in need their extra attention in order to do well. I know this is a bit of a contentious subject. I know my year 11 form are going to hate me for saying this, but the science shows that not having your phone in your room while you're revising improves your performance, particularly when you're doing these little and often revision sessions. Getting rid of all distractions is the best way to be effective. Quite a few parents talked about being that Mr. Motivator, keeping morale high, giving lots of treats and rewards. I know my mum used to bring up uh, to my room bowls of, of fruit or chocolate just to kind of keep me going and almost just a reminder that she was there and supporting me through my revision. But also being building up confidence after a tough exam or a really rough day of revising and kind of picking them back up, dusting them down and getting ready for the next day. In preparation for this presentation, I thought about a book I read last summer called The Greatest, written by Matthew Syed, who's a famous broadcaster, writer, as well as being a Commonwealth Games table tennis player. Now, he looked at a few key athletes from the 20th and 21st century and looked at what made them so successful within their fields. Matthew Syed proved that it wasn't just the idea of talent or the idea of being gifted or born with these skills. He found that success is earned. And he said that talent is not enough and that high quality practice, attitude and cutting edge culture underpinned high performance. So behind every athlete is the team of medics, of physiotherapists, of psychologists, of sports scientists, everyone behind who is looking after that one athlete and pushing them to be better than they could be. And that then made me think about how success is earned in school and how we as year 11s can be the greatest we can be in the summer. As a student, you need to own it, you need to want it, you need to work hard and put in that graph. You need that high quality practice and repetition of your revision, lots of little and often, and having the right attitude is definitely going to help. You're in a school where you have teachers who are experienced in guiding and supporting students through GCSE and A-levels and getting outstanding results. You have a wealth of knowledge of resources of how to revise particular subjects, how to be successful in a particular style of revision, and they're all at your fingertips to use. And then as we've mentioned, at home, having that support and that guidance and someone to listen and be your champion and your motivator and all of those other balls that need to be juggled is going to help create that triangle of high quality performance. By no means am I saying that this is easy and I don't want to come across patronising this presentation, but I just wanted to give you a few hints and tips and a few kind of things maybe to think about or to discuss with your child. In terms of next steps, um, your year 11s would have just received an interim report. So maybe going through it with them and discussing their expectations of what they might like for the summer of year 11 could be a good starting point. Reading the Learning to Learn booklet together, maybe watching this video again together and pausing and discussing some of the key features. Have a look at the checklist, work your way through. 
support and prepare for the December months, getting into those positive routines and kind of building momentum, learning from mistakes, getting better, learning from mistakes, getting better and constantly building up that cycle. And remembering to seek support if needed, whether that's academic or well-being, knowing that your child's form tutor is there to help and guide, subject teachers are there to support and guide, the partial team, the well-being team, there's lots of people that you can draw on for that extra support and they're all named within the Learning to Learn booklet for you. So it falls for me to say thank you so much for listening to this presentation. I hope you found it helpful and supportive. If you have any questions or queries or suggestions, please just get in contact with me. My name is Mr Grimstead and my email address is on this slide for you at the moment. So far, the students have been really keen and engaged on the Learning to Learn programme. And I know that working together, we can do great things in this summer. Thank you. The Oak.